Yeah. In the comics, they are called plimsolls. We call them rubber dollies. Why? Nobody knows. Dad says it's a cork name. I didn't know we could do that. Change the name of the thing. Gym shoes, the teacher says. White canvas. We wear them for what is called gymnastics. Vests, football shorts, we change on the long benches around the wall. I enjoy this, the stretches, jumping and running. I enjoy it more than the football games in the yard or on the streets, especially sprints. We buy them in drummies on Merton's Quay. I expected ships somehow, warehouses, giant barrels of wine, horses and cranes and great masts sparred and canvassed. The name is the name of what used to be. A disappointment in fact. But later, snuck to the fire. I paint ships and colours and exotic sailors into the name, making the pictures come alive. Merchants, I think, must have looked like Mr. Clifford, who has a grocery shop on Sheldon Street full of rich things. The gym teacher used to be in the army. He's keen on what he calls drill. We have small coloured flags, we make lines, we copy his movements. He gets ratty when we don't all make the same move at the same time. He shouts and roars at us, but he doesn't beat us. In our eyes, he's all right. <laughs> On Wednesday mornings, there's a feeling of lightness, packing the rubber dollies. Today, we have gymnastics, a small taste of freedom outside the walls. So, one more, and then you can oh, express your relief by leaving as fast as you can. I, I can't tell you how unexpectedly happy I am with this choice, especially Patricia, because it sets the, it puts it up to Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one city, one book. That's a book of poetry. Mm -hmm. and if, uh, I have to tell you a story. I was explained to somebody that nobody in Cork ever says, I was in San Francisco or I was in Paris. You said, one time there I was in Paris. <laughs> There's always the suggestion that you know, you're constantly back and forth. One time there I was in Paris. So anyway, you're going to love this one. I take a breath first. One time there I was in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> and I said to the Queen, okay, this is a true story, right? Carol Ann Duffy, that wonderful, wonderful poet, she was the poet laureate of England at the same time Paula Meehan was a professor of poetry. She got on really well with Mrs. Windsor. Right? Dead, oh, you know, died in the wool Labour Republican and comes back from the family or Wallace and Carlo. But they got on well because they're two women in love to take care of business. So Caroline, are you bored? No? Okay. <laughs> Caroline persuades Elizabeth to have a night in celebration of the variety of British poetry today. And then, purely for differences, wouldn't it be nice to have an amb ambassador's Maryland? Oh, yes, what a very good idea. <laughs> so there was a Dr. Mayan. Um, obviously, there was no security screening at all there. <laughs> Stroll into Buckingham Palace and we're right? And um, the, the laureates of the British um, countries and of Northern Ireland, they get to read. Jeanette Morrissey, by the way, the Belfast laureate, has, has the pleasure of Philip the Greek coming up to her and saying, and that was a very nice poem. And did you write it all yourself? <laughs> Said that. <laughs> anyway, we're there, we're drinking the free wine and cracking up at the notions of the pages carrying the trays. And like they feel more royal than the Queen, right? Um, and then I said, I found myself face to face and I have to say something. So I said, I was delighted you enjoyed your visit to my native city of Cork. I was in the tricolour street. <laughs> oh, yes, she says, like that. Now, bear in mind, she's 84. It's nine o'clock at night, it's our third gig of the day, and she comes back and says, oh yes, they really put it up to Dublin, didn't they? <laughs>
jealous myself and Paul of her going home with hand knitted Mary Ern's socks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the reward for being here tonight. So thank you for being here. And um, I finish with this. In the small closed yard. In the small closed yards, boys ricochet off the walls and bounce off each other. Animal spirits all. Here the dark women patrol, each one a gliding mystery, some kind, some cruel, all veiled. Mrs. Ryan is dust. That room is dust and rubble, under a road somewhere or in a landfill. The rocking horse, bright lit as by lightning in a storm, fades into black. Some of those boys are already gone, spun into the wind over the city they never left. They fall like snow, like ash, soft through the rippling music of the bells on Shandon Street, St. Mary's Road, Fair Hill, on Churchfield and Gronabrar, on Spangle Hill that became Farron down over the valley of Sweet Blackpool. And I am still walking up Redemption Road, my hand warm in her warm hand, thumb under the strap of the school bag, snug on my back, a clutch of drawings to be smoothed out on the kitchen table. Everyone will say they're very good, then they'll forget about them. I run outside and everything 